how are you doing? Good? I'm doing pretty good myself. If you're not doing too good, well, leave me a comment. Pray for you. So, I'm sure you are having a good day. Uh, today I want to talk about listening. Uh, this subject has kind of cropped up again and uh, I just thought I would address it and maybe offer uh, some advice. Uh, my opinion, <laughs> yeah. Uh, listening is an act of love. It is. And I think it's a good idea to master the art of listening to other people. I've come to realize that listening is integral to having a friendship. Not one person doing all the listening, but that it's reciprocal. And then it goes back and forth. The art of having a conversation is a big deal. And it's come up again where you think, wow, we're going to be such great friends. And um, I'm willing to listen. But after a while, it becomes a reality that I'm only going to do the listening and I'm not going to be able to do any conversing. And what I'm finding is that it's very frustrating. And then my frustration does turn to anger. Inside I feel anger. So I want to get away from this person as much as possible. And I realize that we can't be friends and I might not know how to end it because I, I, I just can't um, feel the frustration any longer. I also find <laughs> that I have this way of testing it out too. I will actually, I'm so aware of it that I'll test it out and I'll say something and see what they say. I'll do it again and see what they say. Then after a while I'll say, well ask me a question about what I just said. <laughs> And they always look surprised and they say, okay, well, um, yeah. And even if they ask a question and I say, and I answer them about what I said, it goes right back into, uh, they're so, you can almost sense it. They're red. They're always, no matter what you say, I sense they didn't hear a word of it. And they are already formulating in their mind what they're going to say next. I think we all kind of do it to some aspect, but being aware of it, let me get into some better lighting. I think when we become aware of it, it's so much nicer. For example, I was preparing, uh, getting this ready on what I wanted, um, what exactly did I want to um, discuss about this subject? Because it's been on my mind. And um, my friend Carol came by and she put in. She looks so much happier. She, she's ready to get a van. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, she looks so relaxed. She's so beautiful. And uh, so, but we were talking about our family. It was a good conversation. It was a ping pong back and forth. And we asked each other questions. But then when she was starting to talk about one thing, I really wanted to talk about that aspect in my life. And uh, she had said something, and I really just, I glazed over it, and I was ready. I almost said it. I stopped myself. And I, instead, I asked her more questions about that aspect. And I waited for her to finish. Then I said what I said. And it was, it was a good ping pong. So I could stop myself. So I know that I do it also. But when we're self-aware then we can stop ourselves and uh yeah so let me walk this way um so this problem has cropped up again and i basically want to give up um you know do you do you confront the person um i've done it before but it didn't help so and in my mind it's probably not going to help with this one too um yeah they're ready, willing, and able to just talk about themselves. And they glaze over anything that um, I have to say about anything. <laughs> yeah. Which shows they don't care. How? Okay. So if I'm going to be... Ooh, this is good lighting. If I'm going to be friends with anybody, how can I do that 
without conversation. I mean, I suppose we could sit and look at each other. I'm not willing to just listen to that person day in and day out and just talking about themselves or talking about what this experience was for them. Um, so I can't have a friendship with that type of person. And I'm finding this out more and more as I get older. Now, what does this have to do with nomad life? It has a lot to do with it. I'm out and about more. I'm meeting new people all the time. And so I and you, we all, as nomads, travelers, whatever we want to call ourselves, we're going to be meeting new people all the time. How do we discern who that person is? How do we know if we want to even pursue it in the first place? There's got to be signs that, we, that I and you, we, that we all can look for. So I kind of uh, took some notes. I went online and I uh, pursued the subject and I took some notes. And so that's what I want to talk about. And the main, the main conversation, let me finish this conversation. I know mine is a one-sided conversation right now. I'm talking to you. I don't think I'm talking at you. you most of you say, oh, it's like you're talking to me. But I know that you, the only way you can reciprocate is if you leave a comment for me, which I hope you do. Put, some, put your ideas out. Um, let's start the conversation. <laughs> that was a pun. Pun intended. Yes. Let's start that conversation. Now, a conversation, I've talked about this once before. A conversation, uh, in my idea, should go like this. You're talking about a subject. You're sharing ideas. And sometimes those ideas just start floating and it's just a free flow conversation about your life, your family, things like that. So you put out an idea and a thought. And then the other person can ask a question. Well, what about this? Well, what did you do with that? And then they can answer that. And if the other person wants to, they could ask another question about what they just said. They say, oh, well, I, well, what about that? Or, or um, how did you feel about that? Then it's a good idea for me to then let them speak. Make a pause and let them speak. Because you know they've got ideas in their head that they want to share too. So let them share something. Or you can ask them to say, well, well, what did you do? And then they will talk. Then ask them a couple of questions about it. Now, if it's a good conversation, they will do the pause and then let, uh, it's sort of like you're holding the ball. You know, they let you hold the ball for a while. And then you can ask questions back and forth. That's a really good conversation. Yeah. So, that's the way it should be. So that by asking questions, you're making them feel that what they say is important. You're making them feel important. You're making them feel worthy. Um, now, when you first meet somebody, I'd mentioned that one trans that I talked to the other uh, couple uh, evenings ago, um, I sensed that that person needed to talk. I mean, you just, I sensed it here, you know. The person needs to talk. Um, she seemed distressed inside. And so, and of course her voice, her Irish accent was putting me very relaxed. So I loved listening to her talk. Oh yeah, it was great. Okay, here we got better lighting. I'm in that one path area. Um, that was great. So I listened to her. I didn't, I didn't offer advice. I didn't offer any of my opinions or, or experiences. Well, this is what I did and this is what happened to me. No, no, I just let her talk. I just let her talk. Listening is an act of love. And when you master the art of listening, you no longer let your ego get into the conversation all the time. Um, it doesn't have to 
um, you don't have to shine in every conversation like well I did this uh, you, you sense that they're just they're waiting for you to finish so you can tell them well this is where I went oh yeah I went over here and then they just they hijack the conversation and you can listen without cutting in to speak all the time big deal that's a big deal you understand the value of listening and asking questions to help somebody open up I got my notes I can't remember every little thing so I'm gonna use my notes there and you don't seek the approval of others because when you are hijacking the conversation to put your in pit well I've been there or I did this or I did that what you're really doing is you're seeking the approval of others you don't have the confidence in yourself to just listen and let another person shine you think before responding you have a filter in your brain that you actually think first like I did and and I, I'm so happy that I did it it makes me feel like okay there's hope um, not that I know I'm a good listener but I'm not perfect so there's hope that I can improve also is when I was talking to Carol I stopped myself I had a filter that said okay ooh, stop what you uh, stop it and let her speak okay and then you you can focus on self-improvement which goes with that I'm focusing of somebody who has mastered the art of listening they have focused on self-improvement so I'm self-improving am I that great eh. I'm learning and I am focusing on it and then you know also you know what patience really means I was patient enough to let them speak and I stopped what I'm finding is when I'm with uh, somebody who I'm, I want to be friends with but they are always speaking and not listening they're always as soon as I speak they go on with another thought or it's on their on what they're thinking they don't have that filter um, they're not really being patient and what's happening is trying it's it's really trying my patience because after a while I, I give up I just do and I become kind of disgusted with that person it's like I can't you know forget it you know I'm done I will test it out and I'm noticing the big there's been two very stark times that this has happened since I've been a nomad there's been two people both of them males uh, by the way no no reply I'm sure women do it too but um, I don't know if they're trying to impress me but they're not impressing me at all uh, I'm just frustrated uh, with the whole thing is uh, yeah they're trying my patience so much that I just want to give up and walk away I mean there's plenty of other people to talk to and become friends with that's what this lifestyle is about so how do we make friends I found on the internet and this will be appropriate and the, the subject was how to make people dislike you <laughs> and vice versa what is it about other people that make you dislike them so I'm gonna go through a list behaviors to avoid in others and behaviors to avoid in yourself don't do this um, interrupting others I have noticed that sometimes I do that sometimes because <laughs> I'll listen to I'm gonna justify this sometimes this person that I'm talking to is going on and on and on controlling the conversation so sometimes I just interrupt it but maybe I should just walk away from it and not interrupt them sometimes it's like let's get to let's get to the bottom line <laughs> my time is important I gotta get to the bottom line okay um another thing is humble bragging and I thought here's how they explained humble bragging is that you put yourself down but it's really bragging like oh yeah you know I tried to lift like you know a hundred pound weights but it was really hard to do because you know I mean I do lift really heavy it's that's humble bragging you're bragging about yourself you know and people like to stick that in because they obviously don't feel really super good about themselves so they have a need to do that name dropping you know I don't have I don't know that many famous people uh, so I don't really name drop too much you know I'm like, mm. You know, I guess if I knew some famous people, but I don't. But name dropping. Um, being too nice. Um, you're too good to be true. And what you need to do is just act naturally. Don't act so nice. Um, 
I guess that's self-explanatory. Maybe I have done that before. I don't know. And at the end, it says nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. We're all human. And we all do these things every once in a while. But when you find that a person is doing a few of these consistently, oh, yes, walk away. Showing dislike for people's pets. <laughs> you know, yeah. They said that pets... When people own pets, it's like their children, especially older people, um, their children are grown or maybe they've never had um, pets or uh, maybe they've never had children. Of it. But um, showing a dislike for them. Um, I hope I've never done that. I probably maybe have, especially if they're, they misbehave a lot. Of course, I'm going to show dislike for them. <laughs> yeah. If they're constantly jumping on me or rubbing their uh, a lot of cats do that they'll rub their fur all over i mean i do like cats and i do like dogs i like cats a little bit more but um i do like pets i do like dogs i do like them to be more well behaved and i do kind of like them on leashes when they're out and about walking as i've already stated okay um not returning things that you borrowed Ooh, and that includes money yeah And letting other people's pay for things frequently. That's self-explanatory. Sharing too much too soon. Yeah. Um, maybe that's why I kind of sense that. Maybe that's why I like to listen, especially in the beginning. I don't really want to just uh, share all the time. Oh, I did have a comment from somebody. Oh, my gosh. Um, they said, uh, and, and I love you still. I know you'll know who you are if, you, if you're still watching. But um, they said, you know, Lee, if you want to get more followers, you should share more about yourself. I feel like you're holding back a lot. And uh, you don't really share. If you want to share, I mean, cha-ching, you know, it, 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 it brings in the money. Um, and, you know, share things about your childhood. Share things. that We want you to share more. Ugh, you know, this is social media. And I have shared. I've shared things. But um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not just a complete open book. And I don't wear everything on my sleeve, you know. No, I'm not going to share every little thing about my life. No. Um, but maybe in person, I, I don't share too much too soon either. Because um, I don't really consider myself a private per person. But maybe I am. As I've gotten older, maybe I am a little bit more private. It's really nobody's business of certain things. And we all know I hate all that back there. I want to go. And it's not that I don't. It's, I've had a really a charmed life and a charmed childhood considering um, I've shared that I was a bedwetter and I've, I've had some bad experiences but for the long haul it was a really uh, I was it was a really charmed uh, life's life that I had as a child I was well loved and well cared for um, and then um, I mean I've shared that my husband passed away and I was a single mom I shared things about uh, 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 taking care of my children and about their lives things like that and what I've done in the past but um, I don't think I need to share every little experience and I don't want everybody to share every little experience with me I will say that in one instance um, there was a fella I mean right off the bat he shared um, like this horrible childhood that he had and it was within like the first um, hour of talking to him and I did I believe now looking back he was just trying to get my empathy and draw me in so that he could use me for um, his uh, chitter chatter that I would just listen and I seen maybe an empathetic person that he could use me. And uh, that, de that friendship didn't last very long at all. So it did make me think when I read this, I go, oh, yeah, you know, he did that. He shared, like, this horrible childhood that he had um, right off the bat. And I, and I remember thinking, wow. I remember in my mind thinking, wow, that's horrible. Um, mm, you know. But I didn't want to say, oh, yeah, well, I had a, oh, my childhood was so much better than that. But I didn't want to do that. Um, but it did make me step back and I think it did it triggered something in my mind like whoa, you know um, Hmm, maybe I need to look out for this person um, Maybe it, it affected him really bad in an adverse way Which is kind of uh, that's kind of rude on my part, but you know, you do have to look out for things like that um, Okay, so moving on um, emotional hijacking yes um, Emotional hijacking is somebody who just um, all of a sudden they start screaming at you or they throw something. That's called uh, emotional hijacking. Being closed-minded. You don't want to be closed-minded um, with people. Uh, just like with that trans, I'm not closed-minded. I mean, I'm, I'm a Christian. Um, 
And, uh, yeah, but I'm not going to be close-minded. I mean, Jesus died for them, too. And so I'm interested in other people's lifestyles, yes. The, another thing, which I didn't call until the ghetto squinting their eyes. If people squint their eyes a lot, that means they're not very open. If people's eyes are open, um, it means that they're more open-minded. But I think we're coming to a point where um, I don't know how applicable that really is. Because some people are very sensitive to light um, as we get older. And I wear sunglasses. You couldn't even be able to tell if I was squinting my eyes. And then, of course, with the mouth, if I was like this, you wouldn't even see what I was doing with my mouth anymore. We can't see. <laughs> Body language is getting a little bit more difficult. Um, excessive sharing on social media. Like that one gal, oh, share everything on social media, on your YouTube. Share everything. Mm, yeah. Uh, if somebody shares way too much, and I do sense that with one of my friends, is that um, they're constantly sharing every little thing that they do to go here. It really is, um, they just have this desire to be liked. Like, oh, look what I'm doing, look what I'm doing. Yeah, um, some people go, oh, I'm going here and I'm going there. Yeah, you want to be more prudent. Um, I think people respect you more and they want to be more friends with you if you're more prudent. And then and the last one is frequently clan canceling your plans. Uh, it, it shows that you don't have um, any regard for somebody else's time. They're constantly canceling plans or they're changing them. Oh, well, let's do it more on this day. Yeah, it shows a disregard for other people. There's a train going by. I think you can still hear me. Another thing to consider is not all older people are um, mature enough to have a good conversation or are experienced or are trustworthy. Just because you're older or you're senior or whatever doesn't, doesn't guarantee that everything's going to be copacetic with uh, having a conversation with them. Obviously, the people that I have had a hard time with are people that are actually a little bit older than I am. Um, what shows maturity in an older person? They take time seriously. They respect other people's time and they take their time seriously. I mean, not always watching the clock and things. but. They, they manage your time well, whether they're a mature um, older person, a mature senior. They manage your time well. Um, they embrace responsibility. I mean, when they have something to do, they do it now. They just don't do it later. They put it, put it off for later. That shows maturity. And thinking about it, yeah, one of the, one of the uh, people that I'm, that, uh, yeah, they put a lot of things off all the time. Yeah. So, um, they take their work seriously. Um, well, a lot of older people maybe aren't working, but uh, you can tell whether somebody, if they do work, they do take their work seriously. Maybe they take, um, you know, their lifestyle seriously. You know, they're constantly doing things, and they do do it now. Um, they clean up the rig. They, they wash the outside of it. They, you know, take responsibility, and they take it seriously. Um, they respect differences in others and we had already mentioned that and they have mastered the art of listening that shows maturity they don't always have to inject themselves into a conversation like look at me look at me look at me this is what I've done aren't I wonderful uh, yeah mm -mm. when you're having a one-on-one -on -one conversation and I know that this right here isn't a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I'm speaking with you. I'm speaking to you. Uh, hopefully you don't feel I'm speaking at you, but I'm speaking to you. Um, this isn't a normal conversation. Please leave a comment. Now, as a nomad, we're going to be meeting new people. So that's why this is very applicable. This conversation and this subject to nomads or anybody who's thinking about it. And for all you who are still in your homes, this is applicable no matter where you are, but um, it is a subject I think that does need to be touched on because you're going to be meeting new people at the RTR. If you're going to join a caravan, if they ever get started again, um, you're going to need to be able to have conversations with them, and you're going to be at you. It's important that you know how to discern who you want to bring into your life, which brings me to trust. How do you trust somebody? Um, what are the signs that they're trustworthy people? And so I looked this up and this is going to be a list and let me go through it. Um, first of all, of course, of course, you have to follow your instincts. That's going to be number one, following your instincts. Because trust is vital to human interactions. 
Why would you want to interact with people you don't trust? That's hard work. Uh, whether you're um, in a uh, romantic relationship with somebody that you don't trust, that's horrible. Or you don't trust your uh, spouse anymore. Uh, he's turned out to be somebody that you really weren't sure. Um, you, you're really at this point not sure if it was a good idea in the first place. Um, not advocating divorce, but those things are going to happen. And that you're going to have to work all that out, your decisions. But, I mean, it happens all the time. It's like, whoa, that wasn't the person I thought I married, you know, because you don't trust them anymore. They're doing things that are untrustworthy. Let's see the signs. Um, first of all, uh, also, we tend to ignore the signs of somebody who's untrustworthy. We, we ignore them. Um, we like we want to think the best of them. They're here and we're following we had the instincts, but we ignored it and That's happens all the time So these are the signs um, They don't have empathy. You could be talking about something that has happened to you I just wanted to look over there. You talk about something that has happened to you. They don't show any signs of empathy In fact, they probably just go on and say well, this is um, something that um, has happened to me and then they, they hijack the conversation um, They're two-faced um, They may talk to somebody over here, but behind but then they come over to you and behind that person's back They're talking about them that's a good sign that they're untrustworthy. Oh, they tell secrets. Yes. Um, if, they're, if they told you something, and then they're probably going to go. If they're telling you a secret about somebody else, they're probably going to do it to you, too. They have a fake niceness. They're very fake. That's something that you really can sense. Uh, that's something you're just going to have to sense. And maybe over the long haul, maybe after two or three days, yeah. Um, you'll sense that. At first, that would be kind of hard. It's like, well, that's really a really nice person, you know, but, yeah. Oh, they make promises they can't keep. And they're tardy all the time. All or a lot, they're tardy. That means they have no respect for you. You can't trust somebody like that. And that they are the most important. They blame others for their inadequacies, for their mistakes. And they are the most important. Their ego is the most important. And we call that narcissists. <laughs> yes, they're narcissistic, yes. Um, and like we all do these things. We all do them. We're human. But when it's a constant that they, they're owning two or three of these signs and it's consistent, cut it off, cut it off. Put your instincts first, very important. Now, here's something I found. I was listening to Jordan Peterson, and he was talking about how to know if they are a good friend. If you tell somebody something that bad that happened to you, they're willing to listen. They're willing to show empathy. They're not willing to hijack and say, well, you should have done this, or, well, this happened to me last week, too, or this happened to me two, two years ago, and they hijack the conversation. That is somebody you do not want to be friends with. Walk away from that person. They don't have your best interest at heart. And I think we all know that. If they don't have your best interest at heart, they don't want the best for you, Get away from them. They're not your friends. Yes. Now, also, if something really good happens to you, they want to celebrate with you. That's a sign of a good friend. Hang on to them. Um, a not so good friend, they will try to hijack it again and they will be jealous of it and they'll try to talk about something that they did or they'll just let it go over their head like oh you know i, I i'm jealous of that or or they will tell you something that happened about them walk away from those kind of people if you sense that they have the, your best interest at heart keep hold of them friends are hard to come by so a, a really good friend yeah I, you don't want friends that will use you Use you for what they want, you know. A good friend, if they walk, if they, if you meet somebody and they're friends with you, but then you go in a crowd and they totally turn their back on you and like they're ashamed to be friends with you and they only talk to other people, 
They're not good friends. They don't have your best interest at heart. So as you meet people as a nomad, you're gonna meet a lot of them. I meet them now at parks. I meet them now at, when I'm boondocking. I, I, you know, I meet people. And I'm starting to gather, like a, like a rolling stone, I'm starting to gather really nice friends. But I'm, uh, I'm pointing out that there are some that I thought were my friends and I have to let them go, or and I have let them go. Because if I can't have a conversation with them, or they're leaving me frustrated with their ego, hijacking the conversation all the time, mm, I, can't, I can't be friends with somebody like that. So I hope you found this information useful. And please um, let me know your experiences, even if it takes a while to type it in. I, I find them fascinating. I love to read your stories. And um, I hope you all have a really great day. I love you. Mwah.